The story begins with a relatively simple one. A girl named Jen, reformed by Michelle Ryan, wakes up from her sleep. She realizes and remembers that the man in front of her is her neighbor, Mr. Davis, performed by James Marsters. She distinctly remembers Mr. Davis because her father never liked the man. Jen then asks Mr. Davis why he is there. Mr. Davis, cautiously approaching the sofa, tells her that there is no easy way to say this to her. Everything is a mess because, four hours ago, a warning was issued that a series of nuclear missiles were heading their way. Davis tells her that a little while ago, he hurried into the bomb shelter. However, when he was about to take cover, he saw Jen in her front yard. Considering the urgent situation due to the nuclear missile attack warning and the lack of time for explanations, he quickly brought Jen into the bomb shelter with him. Hearing Mr. Davis's explanation, Jen suddenly remembered a bump on her head, but what immediately caught her attention was the safety of her parents. Jen was curious about the fate of her parents. This prompted her to run towards the door, but Mr. Davis quickly followed her and held her hand to prevent her from opening the door. Davis pleaded for Jen to listen to him. Mr. Davis revealed the bitter truth that Jen's parents, along with everyone else, had died in the missile attack. He said that moments after he locked them in, the missiles landed and destroyed almost the entire population of Earth. The two of them are essentially the last humans in existence. Although the reality was bitter, Mr. Davis tried to comfort her, acknowledging the enormity of the situation but emphasizing that they were now each other's only friends in a world where everyone else had gone. Mr. Davis then led Jen to a chair and gave her water to calm her mind. Mr. Davis tried to soothe Jen, telling her that she could take all the time she needed to process the situation, as time was now abundant for them. The next day, we found them both engaged in a casual conversation while Mr. Davis peacefully read a book. Jen expressed her regret for the events that had transpired the previous night. She apologized for disturbing Mr. Davis's rest, and in response, Mr. Davis inquired about her current state of mind. Jen admitted to feeling emotionally detached. She was baffled and also questioned their safety in the bomb shelter. Davis reassured her that they were safe. He explained that the bunker's location was 10 feet underground in a structure made of concrete and lined with lead. He explained that as long as the door remained closed, they were protected from radiation. He also mentioned that the door could only be opened from the inside, which further ensured their safety. However, Jen was skeptical and questioned how Mr. Davis could be sure about the bomb blast if he had been in the shelter the entire time. She even considered the possibility that this was a lie. With a sense of half-belief, Jen felt there was dishonesty in the situation. The first was Mr. Davis' story, and the second was the news Mr. Davis heard on the radio. Davis recounted that after securing them in the shelter, he turned on the radio and listened to the news reports as the first missile struck. He also hoped it was a lie, but his hope faded when the broadcast suddenly stopped. He tried scanning other stations, but eventually, all reports ceased. According to Mr. Davis, the halt of all radio reports indicated that all radio stations had been destroyed by the nuclear missile attack that hit their area. Jen asked if Mr. Davis had tried the radio today, suggesting that someone had started broadcasting again. Jen still believed that there might be places where the missiles did not strike the broadcasting stations. Moreover, Jen also said, if Mr. Davis' story is indeed true, then surely some survivors or victims of the nuclear missile explosion might be out there like them. Jen then went to the radio to look for a signal. Mr. Davis showed Jen how the radio worked. He explained the function of the buttons on the radio for scanning frequencies and the microphone for sending messages. Mr. Davis told Jen that if someone were listening to their radio waves, they would hear it and respond. Jen thanked Mr. Davis for teaching her in detail, and Jen began searching for that radio wave, repeatedly asking if anyone could listen to her. Unfortunately, not a single person heard and replied to Jen's radio message. Jen, with determination and full of spirit, did not want to give up. Without despair, she continued to change the signal and send messages, hoping someone out there could hear and reply to their radio message. Meanwhile, Mr. Davis calmly prepared dinner in the kitchen, trying to focus on their survival and how to sustain life in the bunker. After finishing cooking dinner and setting the table, Mr. Davis called Jen to say that dinner was ready. But Jen did not respond because she was still engrossed in her task at the radio. Jen was too focused on her effort to send messages on the radio. Mr. Davis felt a bit disappointed with Jen's obsession, but he brought her dinner to the room where she was, urging Jen to have dinner first and continue her obsession after eating. Later, we see Mr. Davis sitting alone at the kitchen table, eating his dinner. He takes out his wallet and looks at a photo of his wife. This scene evokes a sense of sadness because it seems like his wife is a part of his past that holds specific memories together with Mr. Davis. One day, while Mr. Davis is reading a book and Jen continues to try to find someone through the radio signal, 
Mr. Davis approaches Jen to get the latest information, but Jen reveals her frustration, feeling like she must have done something wrong because she hasn't received any response from the radio yet. Mr. Davis calms Jen down by saying that she has done everything right. Mr. Davis then suggests that Jen take a break and eat something first. Davis also empathized with her situation, acknowledging how difficult it must be for Jen to be stuck in a bomb shelter with him, someone her father considered to be frightening. Yes, Jen's father previously thought Mr. Davis was a scary man. Jen defended him, apologizing for her father's judgment of Mr. Davis. According to Jen, her father was just overly protective of the family, especially their daughter. She began to accept their situation and even smiled at Mr. Davis, recognizing that Mr. Davis had saved her life. Jen also apologized for being too emotional initially when she woke up in the bunker, but Mr. Davis told her not to worry and suggested she take a shower and rest in bed. In the following scene, Jen is seen taking a shower, signaling her acceptance of their situation rather than trying to escape. Meanwhile, Mr. Davis stares at the TV even though there is no signal. Suddenly, Jen hears a noise and calls for Mr. Davis, but there is no response indicating that Mr. Davis is not there. The following day, they had breakfast together in the kitchen. Jen told Mr. Davis that she had slept well the night before. Mr. Davis agreed that she must have needed a good night's sleep, considering she hadn't been resting well recently. Mr. Davis also asked how Jen was feeling now. Jen replied that she felt better, not as chaotic and tired as before. Feeling curious, Jen asked Mr. Davis why he had built a bomb shelter. Mr. Davis explained that he created the bomb shelter for his wife, who was beautiful and intelligent but worried about things beyond her control. He wanted his wife to feel safe, knowing they had a secure place to go if missiles were launched. Jen interrupted, asking what happened to Mr. Davis's wife. Mr. Davis, with sadness, revealed that the worry his wife experienced day by day became overwhelming, causing her to live in fear and never leave the house despite trying medications and visiting various specialists. The medication became too much for her and her life ended with an overdose of pills. Davis became emotional, and Jen empathized with him, understanding his pain. She explained that it wasn't just the loss of a loved one that hurt but also the way people pitied and judged Mr. Davis for not being able to protect his wife. Jen then asked if this was the reason her father and Mr. Davis argued and never liked each other. Hearing Jen's question, Mr. Davis explained that it was for a different reason. Mr. Davis revealed that her father once caught him staring at him. Her father interpreted it as something sinister and had been wary of Mr. Davis ever since. Jen smiled awkwardly and attempted to grab some water, accidentally knocking her plate onto her lap and staining her clothes. Mr. Davis asked if she was burned and Jen reassured him that she was fine but worried she might not have clothes to change into. Davis suggested she wear his wife's clothes since they were the same size, leading her to a closet full of his wife's belongings while Mr. Davis went to the kitchen to give her some privacy. Jen continued talking to him as she changed clothes, pondering that her father should have heard Mr. Davis' story before judging him. However, Mr. Davis admitted that he had become a reserved person after his wife's death and stopped talking or making friends. Jen shows that she is now speaking with him and they are getting along. Not long after, Mr. Davis checks to see if she is finished and finds her wearing his wife's dress. Mr. Davis praises Jen's appearance in the dress and Jen, with tears streaming down her face, admits that she wished she had worn that dress to her prom. Feeling overwhelmed by the situation, Mr. Davis asks what's wrong, and she reveals her fear that things will never return to normal. Mr. Davis decides to lift her spirits by playing music, sharing that he used to comfort his wife in this way. Mr. Davis explains how his wife believed music was a combination of both good and bad emotions and that overcoming pain or loss involves pouring one's feelings into music and letting it flow. Davis asks Jen to dance and they begin to sway to the soft music, letting their emotions merge in the dance. Soon after, they grew closer to each other and Jen expressed her gratitude to Mr. Davis for saving her life. Jen allows herself to be held and they embrace tightly for a while. Mr. Davis comforts her and soon they are seen kissing and becoming intimate in the bedroom. Day 6 began with Mr. Davis and Jen waking up together. Jen asked if they had any tea in the house and Davis pointed her to a box on the pantry shelf. Jen went to prepare tea for both of them but needed clarification on the plethora of boxes from the pantry. She suggested that Davis label the boxes for easier navigation, especially since they planned to stay there for a while. However, Mr. Davis seemed to remember something and asked her to wait a moment while Jen continued to search for the tea box. As Mr. Davis was getting dressed, Jen picked up a box she thought contained tea. To her shock, she found the box was filled with photos of her. Many of them were inappropriate and seemed to have been taken from Davis's house through the window of his bedroom.
Frightened, she confronted Davis and asked about the truth of the photos. Davis urged her to remain calm and listen to his explanation. However, Jen accused Mr. Davis of having kidnapped her, made her unconscious, and locked her in his hideout. She believed that Davis had lied to her to engage her sexually. However, Davis insisted that it was not what Jen thought. Jen quickly moved towards the door, intending to inform the police, but Mr. Davis stopped her and warned her not to open the door. Mr. Davis insisted he was telling the truth and confessed his love for Jen. However, Jen countered by saying her father was right about Davis from the beginning. Jen tried to open the door again, but this time, Mr. Davis pulled her back from the door. Nonetheless, Jen managed to knock Mr. Davis unconscious with a box she found on the table. Mr. Davis fell to the floor, losing his balance and Jen, driven by anger, repeatedly struck Mr. Davis' face with the box, mercilessly killing him. Jen told Mr. Davis's lifeless body that it was no wonder his wife took her own life. Finally, Jen managed to open the door and ran through the dark hallway, hoping to find someone else outside. However, another door appeared in front of her and she attempted to break through it. After breaking the gate and seeing the light, Jen was shocked to see missiles had destroyed the world. Everything had changed and the city had collapsed. She was shocked to realize what she had done and finally understood that Mr. Davis was right. The film ends with Jen sitting on the ground, screaming in regret and mourning the reality she faced.